Have you ever wanted to package data in your Business Central extension? It could be any data. It could be test data. It could be sample data to pre-populate some records with. It could be configuration files. Um, well, if you've ever wanted to do something like that, I have something cooking for you. Or actually, it's cooked if you are using Business Central 25.2 or later. Um, and to illustrate how this works, uh, let me show you. I have this new extension here. And it is, in the spirit of cooking, a list of recipes. And you can specify a name of a dish, which cuisine it belongs to, and optionally an image uh, that uh, represents the dish. And here I have an action to load some data. Haha, now I have a whole bunch of dishes um, pre populated. And also, some of them even have blob data associated with it. How did I do this? Did I hide these images as base64 strings in a text? Uh, variable. Um, or did I hard code all of these? I did not. And I'm going to show you how this works with resources. Now, let's switch over to Visual Studio Code where all the fun happens. So, I have uh, in my AL files, I'll go to the AL first. Uh, in my AL files, I've got, well, the first few objects aren't very interesting. I've just got like a, a table to store the um, fields that I want. I have a page to display what I want to display. But the most interesting thing here is the load action. How did I load all those records? Now, I'm not going to go through all the bars. Uh, but what I want to call out here, the first thing here, is this function, navapp.getResource as JSON. Um, and this is how we interact with resources. There's a bunch of uh, convenience functions like this. So if I go navapp.get Resource. So we have get resource, get resource as JSON, get resource as text. They're used for different things. Um, get resource as JSON, get resource as text. They should be self explanatory. Um, get the resource as a JSON object and get resource as a text. And they have get resource for arbitrary things. Um, if I uh, look at this, I see, I see that I'm reading a resource called recipe index.json. And those of you with an astute eye can see that I actually have this file here under the resources folder. Um, I also have a bunch of images for some of them. And how do I say, hey, this folder should be the folder which I select my resources? Uh, it's very simple. In the app.json, there is a new property called resource folders. And you just specify whichever folder you want. Uh, you may notice that this is an array. Uh, this means you can specify multiple resource folders if you want. Up to you. Um, I've just got uh, my, my single folder with a subfolder underneath. Uh, and so the first thing I do is I read the JSON object from using get resources as JSON. Then I'm not going to go over the, how, the JSON, how I interact with the JSON, but I just iterate over it, get a whole bunch of values out of it. And then I also want to know, hey, do I have an image associated with this dish? And the way I do that is with another function that you can use to interact with resources. And that is navapp.listResources. Um, as you can see, here I've got uh, images, uh, wildcard, uh, JPEG. Uh, basically, it means um, give me all the resources that match uh, this pattern. Um, if you don't do a wildcard, you can also do something like this. You can also do uh, just get me everything in the images folder. That also works. Or you can say, get me everything. If you pass nothing inside, you will get apps, every single resource available to your app. And here, I'm just uh, reading the resource as into an in-stream. And then later on, I'm just copying that in-stream into the records blob. Uh, and that was it. It's was, it was that simple. Um, if I want to add more images, I can just throw more images into the folder. Uh, if I want to add more records, just add more lines to my JSON file here and it works. Now, there are some important limitations with resources that you should be aware of. The first and most important limitation is that resources can only be accessed within the app that owns them. This means if I have another app that depends on this app, I cannot access these resources directly. I cannot use NavApp get resource recipe index or JSON to get the recipe index from this app. It's only per app. Um, the other thing is that we treat resources as code. What does this mean? Uh, whenever you run into 
uh, resource exposure policies. So um, if you specify allow downloading source, resources will be downloaded with the source code. Um, if you if set this to false, it will not be included in the source code. Um, and on top of that, there are some limitations. I don't remember all them off the top of my head, but luckily I have also documented them. So there's this very nice page here, adding and accessing resources in Business Central extensions. And here you can see exactly what I just mentioned, how to, what the, um, how to specify it, the functions you have to use, um, but here the limits. So any single resource file can be up to 16 megabytes. The total size of all resource files has to be under 256 for a single extension. And you can have up to 256 files in an extension. We may change this as we collect uh, data on usage just to optimize our system. But this is what the limits are for now. Um, yeah, and that is everything for my demonstration of resources. And I hope to see you using resources in your extensions as well. Thank you very much for joining me.